Hello, hello. Welcome to the first proper lesson of the Principles of Engineering course on Learn.io. Our first lesson is going to be part of the Simple Physics unit, and we're just going to cover vectors and scalars, just to understand a little bit of what vectors are and how they differ from scalars. Um, so, most fundamentally, scalars are a magnitude, they're an amount, and vectors or a magnitude with a direction, an amount with a direction. But just hearing that with no other information doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's look, an ex look at an example here to kind of understand what I'm talking about. So over here we have a simple nondescript box that starts off at the zero meter mark of our uh, world. And by the end of the problem, it ends up at the three meter mark of our world. So the question's asking us what the displacement of the box is. And before I continue, I just wanna explain the difference between displacement and distance real fast. So if you could just divert your attention to, oh, that was a weird circle, to this triangle over here, <laughs> um, just to demonstrate what the difference is. So let's say we have a man who starts off the bottom, right around here, and ends up right at the top up here. The distance he travels is exactly what it sounds like, exactly what we know distance to be. It's how far he travels, whereas his displacement is the difference between his beginning point and his end point. So to demonstrate, let's say he walks along this red arrow. He goes left for three meters and then up for four meters. It's gonna be a really bad four. Oh, okay, my turn out okay. Um, so we know due to, Pythag due to the Pythagorean theorem that this third side uh, would be five meters long, and that five turned out just as bad as I thought the four was gonna be. <laughs> but um, back to the problem. We know that his distance, the distance that he walks, is seven meters, because four plus three is seven. But his displacement in this scenario would actually be five meters to the northwest. So taking this back to our problem, the displacement is a vector quantity. So while the box travels three meters, we need to add a direction to it right here. The box travels three meters to the right. Um, and that's... Just keeping that in mind, let's look at some other examples just to kind of help understand this a little better. So some common examples of scalars include speed, mass, temperature, and time. Whereas some common examples of vectors include velocity, force, and acceleration. These are actually values that we're gonna be using in the next couple of lessons. So you might've noticed that we have both speed and velocity listed as different types of measurements or different types of uh, quantities. And while a lot of people use these interchangeably, in physics, they really aren't the same thing. Speed is exactly what you'd think speed is. It's just the number. If a car is moving at 60 miles per hour, its speed is 60 miles per hour. The car's velocity, however, would be 60 miles per hour in whatever direction it's traveling. So let's say it's traveling forwards. It would be 60 miles per hour forwards. If it's traveling backwards, it would be 60 miles per hour backwards. The same applies for force and for acceleration. You can have a force in any direction, or you can have an acceleration in any direction. So hopefully that helps you understand what the difference is between vectors and scalars. Um, just one last thing I want to point out before we leave is the little arrow on top of the D over here that you may have noticed. Oop. That's how we denote a vector whenever we're writing equations in physics. If it has an arrow over it, it'll typically be a vector. Whenever I'm writing equations uh, for this course, I may not always remember to add the arrow just because um, it takes a whole bunch of extra time to add it. However, whenever you're searching online for problems or for equations or formulas, and even in high school, whenever you get your formula charts, your equations and the values will always have arrows on top of them if they're vector. Thank you very much.